Could you please remember to adopt I rise to add my contribution to this budget debate. Let me wholeheartedly thank the staff of the Ministry of Finance for the great effort they must have exercised in the preparation of this year's budget. Mr. Speaker, I had paid keen attention to the budget presentation, another largest budget in our nation's history, 277 plus billion. But when it ended, Mr. Speaker, there was nothing to be overly excited about. Mr. Speaker, what could we debate other than to ask, when will our people be afforded the dignity of a good life? Mr. Speaker, now more than ever, there is much unhappiness, cynicism, and despair, largely because our affairs are being poorly managed by this coalition government, which professed to have had the magic keys to skyrocket Guyana's economy and provide a good life for all. But the truth is, Mr. Speaker, even if they make another sweetheart deal with Houdini to join the coalition, he would not be able to assist them with that magic trick. I am sure without a doubt, Mr. Speaker, that there will be a grand bramble offered in the rebuttal from the other side to excuse their complete failure as administrators. I am sure they will do their utmost to try to spin and confuse us with bull thirds and statistics that they themselves will not be able to explain logically. But Mr. Speaker, the time for that is done. The APNU, the APNU partnership honeymoon is long over. We are fed up of the experiment with their political instability, their incompetence that has become a drag on the economy and a major distraction to our people. Mr. Speaker, let us not lose sight of the fact that the issues on which this government won its mandate were one, crime, two, the 16% VAT, which was said to be excessive, and three, the perception of massive corruption in government. On every count, Mr. Speaker, all the hope and promise of an improved Guyana have turned out to be an illusion, a mirage. Mr. Speaker, the citizens of this country have jumped from a warm frying pan into an expensive hellfire where political sniping, cabinet instability, incompetence and corruption are the hallmarks of our new politics. Mr. Speaker, the taxpayers and the citizens of this country are growing wiser and maturing politically. Yes. No matter how this failed government tries to spin, rename, rebrand, reposition, or just sound plain naive, what they are foisting is more hardship on a daily basis. Mr. Speaker, the APNU coalition offered itself to the people of this country based on a premise and a promise of lower VAT taxes on the basis of competence and the promise of a good life for all. Sir, the last five record budgets came from the same people who claimed that the treasury was empty when they took over, that we were in a state of financial ruin, that the PPPC government mismanaged the country and that the sky was about to fall. However, Mr. Speaker, if anything that they were saying about empty treasury were true, then where did they get all this money from to present all these largest budgets? What has allowed them to spend so much over the past three years 
Mr. Speaker, their dishonesty is boundless. Mr. Speaker, the tax exemptions on the retroactive salary increases for 2018 is welcomed by the public servants. But they are very skeptical about the promise of salary increases for 2019. After discussions with the relevant trade unions, as was mentioned by the Honorable Minister of Finance. Sir, even the head of the Guyana Public Service Union is skeptical that this pronouncement will materialize. Once again, once again, Mr. Speaker, more vacuous promises. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the allocation of $35.9 billion to public health may sound like a lot of money, but for a sector which is being plagued with problems that could easily be classified as a crisis, this sum is inadequate. Mr. Speaker, we have repeatedly heard questions being asked of the Minister of Public Health by members of the opposition about the shortage and unavailability of drugs and other medical supplies at our medical institutions. And more alarming, the increasing numbers of maternal and neonatal deaths. Mr. Speaker, without a doubt, both of the ministers of public health will tell us about the grandiose plans of the ministry for the new budget cycle. But yeah. sir, as the saying goes, the horses will starve as the grass is growing. Or to be more specific, our mothers and babies will continue to die unnecessarily while awaiting the fruition of the grandiose plans. Mr. Speaker, we are aware that education is the pillar for nation building. And as such, the huge allocation to the sector is justified. But again, Mr. Speaker, without proper planning and more effective implementation, it will be a further waste of much needed funds, especially since billions of unspent dollars continue to be returned to the Treasury by this agency annually. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues with the responsibility for education will ventilate more on the issues affecting this sector. Mr. Speaker, another sore point is the national security and law and order. This is a matter of great concern to every citizen. And as I said before, it was one of the pillars on which this coalition run for the government. An absence of law and order affects us all, and therefore knows no political or other boundaries. In recognition of this fact, Mr. Speaker, we on this side of the House remain entirely supportive of a non-partisan approach to these matters. Our citizens and visitors cannot be allowed to be sitting ducks in the face of this government's inability to articulate and successfully implement an effective crime plan. This failure, Mr. Speaker, is exacerbated by the government's reckless and wanton dismantling of our national security systems, which has denied us the protection that citizens deserve. The government has budgeted 35 plus billion for this new budget cycle. This, however, Mr. Speaker, in the absence of an effective sustainable plan, is tantamount to throwing good money down the proverbial drain. Mr. Speaker, the police force is the primary agency for dealing with crime prevention and detection in Guyana. There is no substitute for good police work. As such, we believe that this society 
owes not only a debt of gratitude to this institution, but also that we exert best, our best efforts to ensure that their working conditions and general welfare are taken seriously. Mr. Speaker, we must be concerned about the work and life balance of our police officers and other law enforcement personnel, given that they function in highly stressful and difficult environments. It was for this reason that the PPPC administration had instituted an annual one month salary bonus as a salary relief, which was unceremoniously taken away from them by this APNU AFC coalition. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, as I close in my final two minutes, I simply want to say that the biggest problem facing this country today is the government. We need a government that we can trust. The level of trust The level of trust in government, in any government, has never been lower in this country. Mr. Speaker, this government has failed and will convince no one with its self-serving, incredulous rhetoric that this budget represents. Mr. Speaker, we are without a doubt heading for the precipice. Mr. Speaker, the people of this nation <laughs> demand to be allowed to live a decent life. We demand to be given the opportunity to access quality health care and quality education. They are fed up hearing about plans and feasibility studies that bear no fruit. Mr. Speaker, the nation is fed up of promises. Promises, as we know, are comforts to a fool. And Mr. Speaker, we started the day by referring to verses from songs. I myself would like to say a verse from one of Bob Marley's famous songs, which says, I'm not going to sing, you can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. We as citizens of Guyana, Mr. Speaker, demand jobs and a good life, which must not, and I repeat, which must not be conditional on whether we are friends or card-bearing members of any political party whatsoever. I thank you.